Good day everyone. We will discuss about force failover of always on availability group in this video. Let's get started. Let's consider we have um, a two database server, JB sub and primary and JB sub DR as part of an always on availability group. JB sub primary database server acts as the primary replica and JB sub DR server acts as the secondary replica. As far as the always on availability group is concerned, each of these replicas are configured with an asynchronous commit. A forced failover is a form of manual failover that is intended strictly for disaster recovery when a planned manual failover is not possible. If you force failover to an unsynchronized secondary replica, some data loss is definitely possible. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that force failovers are restricted for restoring services to the availability group immediately and business is willing to risk losing data. After a forced failover, the failover target to which the availability group was failed over becomes the new primary replica. So in this scenario, let's consider we are going to do a forced failover from the primary replica to the secondary replica. When this happens, what happens is like the uh, a current secondary replica will become a uh, primary replica and then the previous primary replica JP sub and primary will become the uh, new secondary and when this uh, forced failover is performed from the primary replica to the secondary replica expect some data loss so that is uh, uh, something that you need to keep in mind when you are doing a forced failover the secondary databases in the remaining secondary replicas are suspended and must be manually resumed when the former primary replica becomes available that is in our case if, uh, JB sub uh, uh, iPhone primary uh, uh, becomes available what happens is like uh, it transitions to the secondary role causing the former primary databases to become secondary databases and transition into the suspended state with transaction log truncation delayed on a given primary database while any of its secondary database is suspended data synchronization with the primary database will not occur until the secondary database is resumed on the always on availability group we will now check how a, a, a failover that is the forced failover is performed on our demo machine so um, we have um, uh, two uh, database servers as indicated in the diagram previously jb sub primary which basically acts as the primary replica and JB sub DR, which acts as the uh, secondary replica. So now if we uh, look at the always on uh, availability group dashboard for this particular um, uh, availability group, which is uh, JBAG, we will be able to see that um, uh, we have um, uh, asynchronous commit as the availability mode for uh, both the replicas. And then we are able to see that uh, we are uh, seeing a synchronization status synchronizing for the secondary replica and the failover readiness is basically showing us data loss so now let's consider there is some issue with uh, this JP sub primary for example if I stop the SQL services now what will happen is like um, um, this particular AG will go down and in that eventuality what we will have to do is like we will basically have to perform a uh, forced failover on the uh, secondary replica so in our case the secondary replica is JP sub and DR so what we'll do is like let's try a failover here so you just need to right click on the uh, uh, availability group and then just click on uh, failover now let's click on next and now you will see a warning symbol here it basically tells that uh, we have an uh, um, um, uh, data loss here as far as the failover readiness is concerned it basically tells like there is a data loss uh, since we are in asynchronous yeah so now uh, let's consider in reality when it is a production server and uh, the primary goes down and the availability group is in a resolving state in that case what will happen is like uh, if it is going to be a two node AG there is high possibility uh, we will not be having um, uh, the quorum set and in that case we basically have to go for a force quorum which we'll be discussing at a later stage but as of now when you are doing a forced failover at this point in time what will happen is like you will have data loss so let's click on next 
and then this is the uh, message that you will be seeing which basically tells like the specified replica has one or more database that are not synchronized failing over to this replica may result in the loss of transactions that did not reach this replica prior to failing over so this basically tells like uh, uh, there will be a potential data loss so we need to click on uh, this particular thing uh, basically to accept that uh, we will have potential data loss and then we basically have to click on next and then when you perform the failover uh, let's wait for like a, a couple of seconds and the failover should be completed so now the failover has completed and now if you uh, uh, refresh it this has become the primary and now let's uh, refresh the previous primary which is now a secondary then if we look at that, it basically shows that it has become a secondary, okay? Now what we'll do is like, we will look at the uh, dashboard for this particular uh, availability group. And if you see here, uh, it basically tells like uh, uh, the previous primary and the current secondary, uh, which is your um, um, a JB sub uh, um, primary. Let me close it and reopen it one more time. So let me open that one more time. So if you look at it here, uh, it basically tells like uh, uh, it is not synchronizing. If you see here, it is basically uh, JB sub iPhone primary, which has become uh, our current secondary. Um, uh, it is basically telling like it is uh, uh, having a synchronization state of not synchronizing. So now we know that like as soon as we did a forced failover, we know that the database goes into a uh, suspended state. So uh, if we look at it here on the uh, availability databases, we can see that uh, it has gone for uh, a suspended state. So now if you right click and then click on resume data movement, what will happen is like this is the time when you will have uh, the data losses. For example, uh, whatever LSN is um, um, uh, uh, applied as far as the secondary is concerned, even in higher LSN is applied on the uh, uh, previous primary, what will happen is like whatever current LSN is applied on, uh, the, uh, on the previous secondary and current primary will be reapplied uh, to your um, uh, current secondary and that way you will be uh, seeing the data loss. Uh, we will be discussing more about that after this demo. So now uh, everything seems to be okay. Uh, like let's look at the always on dashboard one more time. So now if we look at it, we can see that uh, JB sub TR, which is the current primary is synchronized and then JB sub iPhone primary, which is our uh, current secondary is synchronizing. So now let's uh, discuss like uh, how a forced failover can uh, cause data loss. So let's go back to um, uh, the diagram here. So now if you look at it here, what it basically tells us like uh, the, uh, the, the before uh, before the forced failover, uh, the primary replica is JB sub iPhone primary and uh, the secondary replica is JB sub iPhone and DR and we have an uh, synchronization state of uh, asynchronous commit. So now let's um, um, uh, let's now check how a forced failover can cause data loss on the primary replica and how it can propagate to a secondary replica. So now let's consider uh, before the primary replica goes offline, that is your uh, JB sub hyphen primary goes offline. Let's consider that the last hardened LSN on this particular uh, um, um, replica is 200 okay let's uh, uh, not get into the exact um, uh, numbers and values as far as LSN is concerned just for understanding let's consider that for the current primary replica JB sub iPhone primary the last hardened LSN is uh, 200 while that of the asynchronous secondary replica JB sub iPhone DR is uh, uh, the last hardened LSN is uh, 100 okay now let's consider at this point in time before uh, the data is um, uh, moved across to the secondary replica let's consider that the current primary replica JB sub primary uh, basically uh, goes offline so let's consider that it is uh, uh, going down let's um, understand as this one and now what happens is like as soon as this uh, JB sub primary which is your current primary replica which has your last hardened LSN as uh, 200 uh, goes offline 
and a forced failover is initiated from uh, JB sub F1 primary to uh, uh, JB sub uh, DR. The secondary replica becomes the new primary replica and uh, mark its last hardened LSN as 100. So now we know that like as soon as this becomes the primary, the last hardened LSN will be 100 because we know that like that is what it was before the failover also. Once the old primary replica is brought online, it shows its synchronization as suspended. So we know that like as soon as uh, we did the um, uh, forced failover and then uh, the uh, the previous primary and current secondary uh, comes online we were able to see that on that particular database the uh, the data movement was suspended and that uh, that uh, uh, becomes suspended automatically whenever you do a forced failover now if the synchronization on the old primary is resumed what happens is like as soon as the um, re as soon as the suspended data movement is resumed it basically synchronizes with the new primary. So now let's consider after the failover, uh, this is the scenario wherein JB sub DR basically becomes the primary and then uh, um, um, uh, JB sub hyphen primary, once it comes online, becomes the secondary replica. And once we um, um, uh, resume the suspended uh, data movement, what happens is like uh, um, um, the secondary replica, which is your uh, JB sub primary, uh, basically synchronizes with the new primary and sends its last LSN as 200. It basically sends as the last hardened LSN value of 200 to the uh, new primary. And uh, what happens is like uh, once the primary uh, sees that the last hardened LSN of the uh, uh, um, secondary is 200, it basically tells to uh, the secondary that the last uh, hardened LSN as for the primary, which is your JB sub DR is uh, only 100. And then it instructs the JB sub primary, which is your current secondary, to roll back its transaction log to LSN 100. And uh, from that, the uh, LSN onwards. So uh, what happens is like uh, from that uh, LSN onwards starts accepting the transaction log blocks from the new primary replica. Thus, the data loss is propagated from uh, the primary to the secondary replica if the synchronization is, uh, um, um, uh, is resumed, basically, when the databases were suspended after the force failover uh, when you uh, resume it back the, that is how you will basically uh, get to see uh, the data loss that's it for this video thanks for watching have a great day Jai Hind